there. Thank you for tuning in. This is Druti Shah and welcome to the Resilient Entrepreneur podcast where every month I bring to you the story of an entrepreneur who has proven to be unstoppable because they are resilient. This podcast is a culmination of my own story of resilience. As someone who taught herself early on to be mentally tough, I came to realize that success stories are great to remain motivated, but true learning happens when you fail, you stumble, you reflect, and you rise. This podcast is an attempt to bring to you, to my listeners, the situations that test your nerves, your grit, and your resilience. If you listen closely, you will hear the entrepreneurs reflect, and who knows? You may have some light bulb moments yourself. The Resilient Entrepreneur is brought to you by C2C OD, a firm that specializes in bringing people and strategy together. And guess what? This is the season finale for our season featuring India-based entrepreneurs. Next month, we go into a new season of the Resilient Entrepreneur podcast and you will have to wait to find out what the new season will be all about. But I'm already excited. With that, let's meet my guest today. Coming right up. Welcome back. For today's episode, our season finale, my guest is someone I've been waiting to bring on the podcast. His journey towards becoming an entrepreneur and a venture capitalist is nothing short of truly inspiring. You will find out why in just a few minutes. My guest today is Devendra Agrawal, the founder of Dexter Capital and Dexter Ventures, a boutique investment bank. He is also the co-founder at Insta Office, one of India's leading co-working brands with presence across Delhi, Gurgaon, Noida, Bangalore, Gandhinagar, and Hyderabad. Deeply passionate about investments and entrepreneurship, Devendra founded Dexter in early 2013 with a mission to help entrepreneurs scale up smoothly by simplifying investor search, term sheet negotiation, and the overall fundraise process. Before Dexter, he served as the CFO of Resonance, a leading education company, and led the whole process to raise private equity funding from rupees 100 crore from a choice of marquee investor groups. He's also worked with a private equity firm, Olympus Capital, as an investment professional. Devendra is an IIT Mumbai alumnus, and let's hear Devendra's story from the man himself. Hey, Devendra, welcome to the Resilient Entrepreneur Podcast. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm really honored. Thank you for agreeing to be here. And, you know, we'd love to start understanding What's your journey been like? Because I do know you wear multiple hats. So if you can just walk us through that. Uh, thanks, Duthi, for inviting me to the podcast. Absolutely pleasure to be uh, here. Uh, so I'll take you back where I was born brought up. So I was born brought up in a small village in Shekhawati, Rajasthan. Small village named Hasampur. Uh, we were a joint family. So you can say... The place Hasampur did not have like really engineers, CAs, etc. at that time. And the exposure at that time was not that the, at that time somebody sees me or anyone sees me in family. They would not sort of be able to see, okay, someone would go to IIT or become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I think that we were destined to become a cloth merchant. Uh, till my entire 12th, I studied in government schools. Uh, hardly teachers would come, like not all the time teachers would come. While I would study, uh, during my schooling days, I would assist my father from class uh, from class four, which is nine year age. And the most interesting story I want to talk about is, I'll just shift to Hindi or Marwadi a bit. So a lot of time, a lot of our customers would come from nearby Dhanis, we call like five to 10 kilometers away. They would take only from my father's shop only. Okay. Uh, so they will say, Ki, okay, there are five customers, six customers. Then my father will say, hai, So the way it would happen is ki, my son is in school, you can you can go and invite. They don't know where the school is, they know which class they are to go. They will, they will actually walk into a customer who will walk in live class and he would invite me. And I would like, okay, I'm like the cool guy. 
so i'll come out of the class and go to go to my father shop so uh-huh. that was the journey i was enjoying uh, till my 10th class i did not have a clue my teacher did not have a clue my family did not have a clue that i would do anything thankfully by stroke of luck i got 88% marks in rajasthan board which is a not a cbc board rajasthan board tend to be a little tougher in terms of scoring marks and i got like not merit list but i would say top 20 to 30 kind of rank mm. like my teachers were surprised they never see my brother i got 84% mark but they never saw like 88% was like just too much for them and i insisted with my father Uh, that I want to go to a school in Jaipur, which was the nearest town. It was the state capital of Rajasthan, because the second and second rank person was going to two good schools, Saint Javier's and MPS. Mm-hmm. And I was like nothing. I don't know anything about those schools. Kind of peer pressure, what we call today, right? Or just yeah, yeah, yeah. I was happy, obviously. That right. I scored so much marks, and I know, like today in board, even parents take leave. In my board, I would drive like four kilometer on a cycle, bicycle. to give an exam and once i come back i would play games like setolia marathi during board exam because two hour play is mandatory like board board exam whatever doesn't matter so that's how it was the case and and the interesting story is that at that time when i insisted my father that i also want to go to that school will i score higher mark first time my father sat with me and explained the financial situation that my father was facing so he explained that look we are in joint family uh joint family large family so we had six buas i had six buas two uncles and two elder brothers to so look i alone sort of take care of everyone and you are like i was like right hand man for him so if you go not only earning will half the expense will also increase what else study you have to do you can do with a nearby school as well the school was 20 km away it was a town called kotputli now it has become a district so he very very kindly made me explain and i would say those two year uh, 11th and 12th when i went to kotputli not to jaipur became formative year for me both in terms of my character the way i think because suddenly i became that young kid to like elder who has like family responsibility as well along with my father so that was not the expectation from me and i would go to school uh, i would wake up in the 5 in the morning because 7 am to well with a ship there were two ships in my school in kotputli so that's in your secondary school uh, and you cannot reach 7 am because the first bus that will come to hasanpur would come at 7 so but right. you have to go in the hope uh, it was one and a half kilometer you will walk and you will stand the bus stand in hope ki koi car koi bus aa jayegi to time pe pahunch jaunga which would rarely happen so that i that i did for two years and the and the funny thing is that when i used to go to school Uh, right next to school, my chacha ji, real chacha ji, has a shop. Uh, you can say shop of uh, books, stationery, etc. So I would work with chacha ji. Then next duty will start, which is entire mahalla of my village would give me responsibility of buying vegetables for them. The vegetables were cheaper in Kotputli compared to village, okay. and I I never knew how to say no. So I would have like twenty kg of vegetables buying have to do, and which they expect me to do it. best quality low lowest price which by the way helps me today as an entrepreneur so i'll do that then i'll go back to bus i'll come back like 5 o'clock by 5 o'clock or 3 o'clock 3 to 5 o'clock in the evening and before even i can enter house this was a rule my father had made i had to go to a shop i had to deposit money to papa so you can see you are making like small entries etc and only after you have put the money etc then only you will go back home have your food will be water and then you come back to shop again because sare customer hai unko aapko service karna hai and wow. 10 o'clock you would sort of free ek ghanta ek ghanta jo padhai hogi wo karoge and the same routine continue why that that thing is important is a it helped me and my father would always say that if you want to study you will study so yeah this is your responsibility it's a third generation shop आई डेड फॉर माई हमारे दादाजी के लिए मैंने किया uh, दादाजी ने अपने दा, अपने फादर के लिए किया तो तुझे दुकान पे बैठना है यू आर डूइंग द सेम जॉब डिग्री बी कॉम या बी ए की ले लेंगे आप एंड आई वुड लाइक टू स्टडी बिकॉज टू ऑफ माई ब्रदर वर्स स्टडी राइट तो आई वुड लाइक टू बी हेड ऑफ दैम सो टू यूर दिस होल थिंग कंटिन्यूड आई रिमेम्बर ड्यूरिंग माई बोर्ड एग्जाम आई रिक्वेस्ट माई फादर प्लीज अलाउ मी 
to stay at my chacha's home. My chacha used to live in Kotputli only, very near to my right. school. But otherwise, I'll miss the board exam. He allowed. But two days before maths exam, I got holiday. And he had to go to wedding. And this was a season. Uh, when Akshat Tritya was at that time, the March is only the exam and board exam are coupled with season. So, he came back. Two days of season. I don't have to sit in the shop. You have to sit on the shop. And two days I came, he promised me that he has not invited a single customer. If a walk-in customer comes, that's fine. And that's where I realized that, that was not a correct thing because for full tea day, two days, I was like handling customers. Not a single minute I could pick a, my revision book and I had to go and give an exam directly with whatever I knew. And I could not even revise even my friends who were relying on me. And I actually got less marks in maths. Uh, and I again missed out on the merit, which my even school principal sector felt that uh, I should have got. Uh, I missed merit by a few marks. I got 87.38% marks. Quickly fast forward, uh, once again, same question came. I want to go to Kota to prepare for I I don't know what IIT is. PD. My father said ki dukan pe hai. So my brother who was doing an MBBS, he stood up for me. And he said, ki pap, bahut simple rasta hai. Isko ek saal bhej do, coaching karane ke liye, ek saal ka nuksaan hoga. Yadi padai nahi ki is ne, to dukan pe hai. So that's how I was sent to Kota. Just to clarify, I was sent to Kota, not like ki my father took me to Kota or etc. My father took me to Jaipur because unko kapde ki shopping karne Tripoli aja tha. Meri mousi ka ghar hai Jaipur mein, uska bus ka number bata diya, aur mujhe paise de diye. Bete, ye paise hain, ye mousi ka ghar hai. Kota ka rasta mujhe bhi nahi pata hai, tujhe apne aap figure out karna hai. Koon si coaching jana hai, kaha karna hai. Ek kagaz ki parchi pe super distant relative ka address lik diya. You can figure out yourself. Auto wala guys told me ki IIT J naam ki wajh jidiya hoti hai. I took Bansal classes test. Uh, I got eight marks, got failed, failed in months classes test, joined career point where I got uh, 2693 rank in first attempt. But first eight months, I, you can say, distracted, loitered. If you send a kid from village to a city, which gives an exposure and, and there are city kids that are coming who have been in good school, right? Sometimes you just think, so that happened. I realized, ki, okay, I'm not doing my best shot. So my brother, who was a doctor, my brother, by the way, had scored. Uh, third or fifth rank in CPMT without any coaching and 85th without any coaching in CPMT in first attempt. So, wow. so he put me this thing, okay, look, if you're not, if you feel that you're not done justice to your potential, then I got the, I got selection IDJ. So why don't you go and join it again? Try to get better rank. Uh, this was 16 July 2001, uh, uh, 16 July 2000. His condition was that Counseling was 10,000, 20,000 fees. Mm -hmm. so again, the question is, if you are not going to IIT, you should not go to IIT. You should have clarity in your head what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So he took me to IIT. He made me visit IIT hostels. He put me in the queue for IIT and asked the question there. Now you want to go ahead. If you pay this 10,000 rupees, then you are going into IIT, you are not reappearing. If you come, so I actually came out of that queue to sort of, let's say, reappear or re-prepare for IIT, which I did. Uh, next year, I got 136 rank in IIT. I went to uh, IIT Bombay. I took a long walk with my brother when I joined IIT Bombay because I was feeling like I'm pretty happy to the world. He was already in this thing. He told me three things that, look, we come from small villages. I have gone through a lot. So three things you have to remember, you will be bullied a lot. You have never seen bullies because Gao mein koi bully nahi karta. Mazak karte, bully nahi karta. That's one. Second, whatever you learn from your parents or village, you will experience a ton of things. We did it hint towards like drinking, smoking, drugs. Like there are a lot of things. Vices will sort of come, which is very, very natural for the age as well as the kind of thing. You need to choose your own path. Whatever path you choose is right, but you need to choose. The only thing is probably you need to be truthful to family. And third, uh, this whole glamour would take you to a ton of paths. You need to decide your own path. These are three things from walking from my hostel, hostel 5 to a chaiwala shop. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, that walk was very helpful. There's so much wisdom in what he was saying. I mean, uh, I'm sure it guided you along the way. Absolutely. So now the most interesting part comes when people come from villages, which is a, you can say, deficit. They don't have exposure to English. So I did not have exposure to English. I learned my first alphabet of English in class six. I did not have any knowledge of grammar. 
So I did not know, like you need to use second form of work, nothing of that sort when I reached to IIT. I'll give you, let's say two example. I was sitting in a lounge, the movie first day, or first day of my IIT or second day of my IIT, the movie was True Lies, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Pamela. And I was like, I was like who are these two guys, Arnold and Pamela? And like entire lounge paused and erupted in laughter. Or really? Am I supposed to know this? So I went through that like six months of being a joker or being laughed at, being laughed at during IIT. What I learned from my brother is that no, you cannot survive without English. You need to learn English. So I took one and a half year of hard effort to learn English on my own. I read my first book, uh, my experiment with the truth. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi was somebody I really, really admired. Every line of that book had like six to seven uh, golas because I would not know the words. Meaning. Yeah. Meanings, right? I would not know. So he, my brother gifted me a dictionary called Collins Coble Dictionary, uh, which is a good dictionary because it new usage and it's a very good dictionary. Uh, mm -hmm. dictionary because you tend to rectify the words. Yeah. So, so that I learned during English. A lot of my uh, wingmates, social media was supported. A lot of people would bully me. Uh, so I, I got like good exposure. The good thing is that even my brother had told me my mother has also told me that you don't have to be ashamed. You come from where you are, you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed. So I went through that sort of, you can say, uh, my mother, in my uh, college, my wingmates, my hostelmates call me fighter. Because they know that my nickname is Devu. So they say that if Devu has taken it, then leave it. It's like that. So, but we got to resistance in a way, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, so they basically knew that I'm trying to aspire to learn English. I reached to some level where I became comfortable to speak a little bit. And that's how I went through IIT. I was not the best student, not like your nine pointers, neither not like that famous five or six pointer as famous by uh, Chetan Bhagat. I was like decent student. And I was trying to figure out my journey. My father wanted to me, wanted me to become an IAS officer because he saw the potential I was confused. I was very idealist. I'm still probably closer to an idealist still. I felt I talked to some people. You may need to work under politician. You are too good or too nice to be going this thing. My uh, guide wanted me to go to one of the best institutions like Stanford, MIT, because I was good at electrical engineering. Uh, I was a good student. So I got like PPO in text instrument uh, during my summer internship. So now my senior, uh, Praful, he guided me. I wanted to leave like Entire job and I wanted to prepare for finance because somewhere wo dhande wala tha. Uh -huh. So I I I wanted to do that. Prafull told me that you know you don't need to do that. Uh maybe you just illusional. He asked me a bunch of questions. I did not know anything like the equity or the venture capital. Could be nothing the stock market. So mm -hmm. yeah, you are just illusion, like overconfident IID, you know, who doesn't know anything about finance. So he put me in a place. He was two years senior to me. He went to McKinsey, went to Howard, now he's running his own startup, he went to Bradbury Fund. So he is he was, he was just getting illusion. He was a senior, the senior know how to put place doing it, right? So he said Ki, go to text instrument. If you're really passionate about finance, it will bring to finance, right? If you're not, you are going to a one of the best uh, uh, best company. Text instrument used to be a uh, pretty good company at back then, still pretty good company. So you're sorted, right? Why do you want to take undue risk? And that I did. When I came to text instrument, uh, I was very, very passionate about finance. So I did the pursuit for one year. I got into uh, then uh, the first uh, real finance of Clear Capital. I very clearly remember the founder of Clear Capital, main founder, Nick Paulson Ellis, was a UK national. Mm -hmm. And Pramod could be, uh, he's now part of Marcellus. He conducted my interview. So in my first interview, I thought I know English. But you know English as Indian English. Eh? You don't know English. <laughs> I never was an English movie properly, right? You never interacted with this thing. So I started interviewing and like, okay. Nick doesn't know what 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 I am saying. I don't know what Nick is saying. And I am the one that I am not quitting this interview. And Nick is saying, I want to interview this guy. He, he has been heard about this. So Pramod has been invited as an interview. So you see a director of an Indian company to act as an interview. And he's like, if you need Vasanara, why the hell are you are interviewing? And by the way, Pramod had rejected me uh, when he interviewed me. Not oh. he. He me. They're like, why do you have to do that, right? So, but there was something maybe about me with the lights, right? So that interview happened uh, in an interviewing fashion, uh, interviewing fashion in the sense that uh, it, it went on. And I was like, okay, uh, 
uh, if you want to do continue to i am going to answer whatever question there if i don't know english that's not my problem that's how i was trained yeah we'll figure out the rest yeah so that's how i got into player capital and rest obviously then it was a uh, path that i traverse uh, till next day right and and then you got into you became an investor yourself you became an entrepreneur right. yourself how did that happen yeah so clarity is the most important either for an entrepreneur or any person so since 2006 i have very good clarity that i want to become either an entrepreneur or an investor the reason the seed was sown when i worked with my father in class 4 Uh, from class four to class twelve, right? Nine years of the journey of business. वो धंधा करने में इतना मजा आता था. I used to really, really love it. And then when I used to apply all those concepts which my father taught me implicitly, उधार नहीं देते हैं, ज़्यादा माल नहीं खरीदते हैं, सस्ता माल खरीदना कमाई होती है. All those things, right? So it automatically made me wired to only doing two things: become an investor or uh, entrepreneur. And when I read my first CFA book, I, I completed. I did all three levels of CFA. So I could understand what my father was teaching me, right? So I was I was the guy who already had gone through the work experience before studying, right? Exactly. So I could understand what he was doing. So I was very determined to do either of two things. So after Clear Capital, I joined a property fund called Olympus Capital. It's a phenomenal fund, a uh, very very high quality fund. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was set up in 1997 by three buddies uh, worked together in like uh, Stanford School, and they invested in HDFC Bank as first investment in 1999. O six they exited. O seven I was hired as the second person in that India team, uh, okay. and and I was I worked with them for like over three three and a half years. So I really loved working at Olympus. While I was at Olympus, I also tried my hand at entrepreneurship by doing a startup called Home Taste Food Solution Private Limited. So that story is also very interesting. A lot of people don't know about that story at all because I never told it. So I had my cousin uh, who was very foodie. He was from Bits. Uh, And when I joined Olympus, there were two problems very clear to me. One, food was not really available for office going people. Right. There's no transportation. There are no cabs, etc. So just to give an example of problem food, we used to work in DLF Cyber City Building Number Eight. It only had three restaurants: uh, Subway, Nuba, and Below Eight. This Nuba was in Below Eight. Gurga. Gurga. Huh. Okay. Right. And there was like long queue of twenty to fifty people between twelve to two every day in front of Subway. And I was like, "What the heck? People are eating junk. The subway is still toted healthy, but still a sandwich. And yet there's a line of what? What like why? Why people can't eat homemade food? Yeah. And that's how I started Home Taste Food Solution Private Limited because my my cousin was a foodie. So I applied all the thing I learned from my father. I went to a market. I think it was in uh, Las Patna or something. Spent like two days in marketing. Only one day for only hunting how to buy cheapest utensils, tiffins." Kadai and all that stuff. Uh, we took twenty thousand square feet kind of space in like sector five. Uh, we hired uh, cooks, helpers, etc. By the way, Jomito was known as Pudi Bay at that time, and we took like some sort of thing from Jomito as well, like some learnings, etc., etc. They were doing uh, fairly random stuff. They were not what they were. So I started. I and my cousin started with that. So my schedule used to be: I would wake up in the morning at four a.m. I and my cousin. My cousin would drive the bike, and I'll go to a Monday. Okay. So I'll go back. Uh, I'll go buy, pick up vegetables. All the training I did for two years in vegetable picking that came handy. So I knew what vegetables to pick. Yeah. Cheapest vegetable I'll pick. I'll come to kitchen with my cousin and I'll wake up the cook and the helper. You get ready to ensure that uh, when you have to go to office, you are ready. And by the time I'll get ready, etc. They will ensure that food is ready. So we'll do tiffin packing, etc. And and that's how my routine used to be there. At, Uh, Olympus may used to reach between eight to nine a.m. generally. So I'll reach there. My cousin would ensure that all the delivery etc. that used to happen uh, would happen during the day. Around seven, I'll come back once again back to kitchen, work till ten to eleven, go back home with my cousin, ensure everybody sleeps. So we are the first person to wake our staff, and we are the last person to go from our shop, which used to be the schedule at our father's shop. So the same thing continued. One and a half hour, hour years did pretty well, pretty profitable. uh there was a very small i would say community of angels morpheus uh, angel samir gulani and andani used to run that uh, they offered very small some i think 10 lakh or 7 lakh for 10% stake which i said no because olympus used to pay me very very well they used to pay me uh, usd salary etc so i was self funding it my cousin did not need to fund it because i was the part time or the full time sort of stuff 
Right. So that story continues. The only problem is that when you are building a startup, you need external validation injection. So that I did not do. My uh, my mother and my cousin's mother were sisters. So they would often talk uh, how I would live a luxurious life as well. So Olympus may even domestic travel or business class, you'll stay on the five-star hotels, etc. So sometimes they will talk and uh, my cousin's mother will explain that he's a bike or a van, different delivery, etc. Which I was also doing, but obviously he was doing full-time, I was doing part-time. One day, my cousin suddenly said to me, he wanted to quit and he wanted to join a finance firm because his parents wanted to do that. And it became more of a irreversible decision. So we decided to shut that down. He joined J.P. Morgan, still in J.P. Morgan, UK, uh, London. So that story ended there. The learning I got from that entrepreneur skin, Dhuti, was I very clearly knew I was living in two worlds. One world, we are investing like Raman's company, Quattro, uh, Raman Roy's company, we had invested, all of course, a seed investor there. So they are like, you talk about hiring CXOs, like good quality people. And in my company, I'm dealing with people who are like 30,000, 40,000 every max. Uh, how am I going to scale a company which will become bigger? And I had no clue. And and then the practical training is not a good training to become an entrepreneur, in my opinion, because the training basically makes you slightly less uh, people centric. You start demanding too much, uh, too soon. You become too more too much analytical. You start like jumping to conclusions. That's, that's my opinion. So it could be different for different people. So I said, okay, look, if I spend more time in practical, I'm going, I'm going closer to my investing dream. But I'm going away from my entrepreneurial dream. So I need to change that entrepreneurial dream first because this is the high energy time. I don't have responsibility. I don't. I was not married uh, back then. Right. I decided to quit. Uh, decided to quit in the sense, mentally I decided to quit uh, and join a company called Resonance in Kota. It was a uh, coaching institute, IDA, founded by my teacher. Uh, I was very, very grateful to my teachers because they helped me get into IDJ. In fact, uh, when I got my first salary, my mother wanted me to put the entire salary towards the East State, Kato uh, Shamji. And I found by my, with my mother that I don't have to pay for one rupee or how much I doesn't matter, right? So I went to CMH Road. I was in Bangalore, text instrument that. Uh, went to Riemann Shop, bought five suits for five of my teachers and packed, couriered and sent to them. And I used to be in touch. So uh, during that discussion with Resonance Promoter Mr. R.K. Verma, he offered me a position and this was this was way back in like 2009. Uh, I accepted that. My uh, supposedly date of joining was 15 July uh, mm -hmm. 2010. Uh, 3rd July was my wedding. Now, the, at that time, we were doing a very large deal with Tata Group, Tata Power, 300 million deal. So, so I didn't want to quit uh, the firm while leaving in the list. I told Burma sir, this deal is still going on. I can't quit you right away. Uh, because I've quit, uh, there's too much dependent on. Uh, it's, I, now I feel it's foolhardy to think that a card with they are dependent on that, but that at that time I, I thought that way. My entire firm was working, it was a pretty large deal for us. So I told him he accepted, then uh, I joined him like in Feb 11, and that was a short stint of two years, but pretty good stint. I learned a lot during those two years, those become my formative years for my current journey as Dexter, where I'm doing uh, as an entrepreneurship journey in terms of how to sort of be patient, how to deal with people, how to hire. A lot of things I learned during those two years. Uh, hard working, again, once again, the same way continued. Uh, even added a lot of value to the firm as well uh, at that time. Uh, when I joined, it was 7 crore pact uh, from when I left, it was 42 and a half crore pact in 2013. So pretty, pretty good sort of work. And when my daughter was born on 2nd December 2012, uh, I decided to mentally quit. 4 December was a board meeting in Bombay. So I told my sir that, okay, okay I want to sort of uh, quit and I want, don't want to go away from my family. And that's how Dexter was born technically in December 12, but incorporated March 13 in Jaipur uh, as an instant banking firm. And since then, I've been running Dexter doing different things. Oh, that's fantastic. But there is so much here, right? Right from uh, being a cloth merchant, going to Kota, IIT, learning English, uh, you know, becoming comfortable with the language. And this, I mean, 
even in the stories that you share, and I'm so grateful that you did, because it's so much about taking risks if you really want something, right? It's about having the clarity which you talked about. Um, it's about, you know, having that business in your DNA, but putting in the hard work. It's about never forgetting those people who stood by you, in your case, your teachers, right, who forged you. So if, um, you know, if you have to say that, okay, here are the top three things that entrepreneurs need to do in order to remain resilient and build a resilient startup, what would it be? I think the three things that, non if I take an extra journey, right, like if I became an entrepreneur, uh, to think of my opportunity cost on a daily basis or I have to quit two year, three year, doesn't work out. I Dexter wouldn't be this thing because to reach my like salary, forget like this thing, revenue of my firm was not same as my salary for the first five years. Right? So it was like very, very difficult. So I think one is clarity, what you are building, why you are building. Second is enormous amount of staying power, resilience. If you are becoming an entrepreneur, you might you might change your you might change your entrepreneurship journey ten times. That's completely okay, right? But if you if you are if you are only becoming an entrepreneur, ki yaar, bante hai, lage to chakka hai, choka, otherwise blog lik denge, badiya sa, uh, or thir vapas koi job join karna. That's not entrepreneurship, honestly. That's like you're just trying to ride a wave, right? Like somebody will give you capital, etc. Yeah. So I think that's a real sort of let's say person need to really fight it out, see the challenges, right? Uh, if I like while the entrepreneurship fashion has been in DNA of the country, right? Like two people I know. So uh, lovely university is a uh, is a related people. Uh, Baldevaraj Mittal is real brother of my daddy. Okay. So 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 I seen him when he used to come to our village. Asampur, I seen him, right? Like simple. Purane life dhanda kaise hota? Dhanda karte ho. Jo profit hota hai, usko reinvest karte. That's simple. And then right. you see the opportunity, you try to hire people, you try to get this thing. That's how it, that same principle, principle are not changed, right? Uh, you try to apply same principle. It's just like aap kharcha kam karte ho, personal life, you kharcha kam karte ho, professional life, kharcha kam karte ho. So that's how you try to build, right? Which is called frugal entrepreneurship. So I really, really appreciate frugal entrepreneurship. You need capital to hire people, sometimes to build technology, sometimes. It's not that you don't need capital. You right. should have capital by side, but Sometimes having extra capital made uh, would make you make mistake. I remember when we were sort of Anradha was running multi bhashi. In one, uh, Anradha is my wife, uh, also co-founder Dexter, partner Dexter Venture. In one like month, we had like sharp jump and uh, marketing spend, like pretty sharp jump. Mm -hmm. And ROI was not there. We hit an agency. Agency gave like fantastic fifteen page report. My mm -hmm. ROI is not there. And I, my first principle thinking, another first principle thinking did not ready to accept. We went through that thing and we realized that the leads they were generating, some of the landing pages were not even there. The leads were not really going, right? There were basic error because marketing function, the product function, operation function, there was a mistake. We fired the agency, but we lost like 10, 15 lakh rupees in that month in marketing without leading to the outcome, right? Uh, so. Something, sometimes these things happen. So entrepreneurs need to have very, very clear ability to stay hungry, stay, uh, okay, we need to crack it. If they realize this is not happening, that's fine. They can move on. Yeah. But maybe they need to figure out uh, how to stay motivated, how to go day in, day out, try to build it. So let's end this with asking you, how do you stay motivated and inspired and hungry in order to do more? Yeah, so I think two things. One, very clear recognition that uh, I'm doing for for full life. Like I and Radha, between two of us at least have to clear that we are on for life. So that's one. Second, our needs are pretty less. So we know if we, if we don't succeed, if we don't succeed, we can we can just do teaching or whatever, and even very little capital can survive us. We told our kids as well, don't expect too much luxury. A lot of my peer group actually tell me to shift to a pretty high quality society. The reason we are in a good society, good quality society, a day where we have people identify us is because we want our kids to be trained humbly. So, so we are doing the whole entrepreneurship because we love the work. And aspirations are to create something fantastic, not strictly motivated by money, I would say, 
but but more to create something beautiful and 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 having a uh, my wife would disagree but i would say a reasonable the work life balance so the way i work is 9 to 9 work uh, monday to friday now i follow that i dear it was not the case saturday 9 to 7 and sunday try to spend the family so have clarity okay this is how you are doing it and 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 keep doing it uh, results will ultimately come exactly yeah so keep going at it and again that fighter spirit of yours is coming through as you say that but i definitely hear it in you uh, you know in terms of frugal entrepreneurship entrepreneurship where you can make an impact and if necessary pivot you know there's always yeah i'll, I'll touch upon maybe take one minute on that piece so first five year next was the toughest i have seen uh, because i was really tested during that time uh, my father taken like every temple he knew and every jyotsi he knew during those five years I used to stay, come to Bombay. I would stay in like those three hundred rupee to five hundred rupee kind of pod hota na. Uh, I would stay like next to Kohinoor Hotel, uh, Oyo type ka hotel. I'll stay in that. If कोई अंतर में मिलने आए तो Kohinoor में जाके meeting करो. And I would really wish that when the bill comes, the अंतर में offers to pay or not like ask me to pay. <laughs> so so it's like ki be frugal, right? Like just travel and I traveled in buses, trains. uh if uh, then i realize you no know, time is this thing so ensure that you have to value that so being frugal is a dna and you do that that's a really really good i i i ran another startup called insta office and i tell very small story so whenever you visit insta office we had an office in hyderabad mm-hmm. whenever i visited from bangalore i would take overnight bus and we had a third floor where the cabin i would get fresh enough there at chakkar and start the work And if I go from Dexter side, I would actually take a flight and like stay in a sort of by the time Dexter didn't bail. And my uh, landlord asked me, "Ki why do you do that?" And I said, "I had to do it again, right? Insta office is losing money. I can't spend their money. I have to do hard work here. Now Anthony expects me to meet in a nice hotel. Now I can afford it. I do that. So you have to be true to the DNA, whatever you're working, and ensure that you deliver. So being true to whatever you decided and and continue to sort of let's say fight for it ultimately you'll succeed i don't think there's any power which can stop you from succeeding exactly yeah i think um, and I always say this right you fail when you stop um, absolutely i can hear that in your story devendra so clearly and i'm so inspired already in that sense and you know from your story this is the first time i'm hearing it from you first hand of course i've read about you but it's been a fantastic conversation once again thank you so much for joining us it's been a privilege thanks to you it was a pleasure to be part of it thank you another brilliant conversation and i couldn't have asked for a better guest then devendra to sum up what it means to be a resilient entrepreneur in india i mean truly a son of the soil you know somebody who started in a very small village in rajasthan and has now carved out this entire path for himself and continues to do that for entrepreneurs everywhere i am so honored and privileged to have had this conversation with devendra but i would like to bring in our producer ramana what did you think of this Thanks, Ruthi. Uh, you know, I'm actually glad that we spent more time this episode tracing Devendra's journey mm-hmm. towards becoming an entrepreneur, because, like, like you said at the beginning, right? His story is truly inspiring, uh, and especially the story of his childhood, working with his father at the shop. It had all the ingredients of what great entrepreneurship looks like. You know, grit, yeah. resilience, agility, being committed against all odds. I mean, I truly admire what he achieved or what he managed to achieve so early on in life. Absolutely, and you know, think about it, right? Um, you just create a pattern from the story that he shared. All right, you know, I I gotta study. I gotta help my father, and he said, right, grade eleven and twelve were formative years for him in a way, right? Yes. And, I think he must have just told himself that come what may I'm going to achieve what I'm set out to achieve without compromising on some of the values that I have and I think he really showcased that so he really lived the craft before he studied it in that sense as well and for me you know quota I'm going to get into it I'm not going to bother about the how I know my what and why very clearly similarly language he said that you know he'd not even read a book in english before he went to iit mumbai I hope I remember that right but yeah that's what he said and not a problem I'm going to 
teach myself. So you spent like 18 months learning the language. That is truly phenomenal for me because yeah. I, I've really had heard these stories before, you know, where people come in from uh, the towns and the smaller cities and they make it big. But having this conversation one-on-one with Devendra was a very different experience in itself. And the scale at which he's been able to do what he was set out to do, I mean, that's just hats off to him. And I hope that all the entrepreneurs and listeners of our podcast are able to show the same level of grit and resilience that Devendra has shown. And nothing is impossible. Nothing can be a barrier if you truly set out to achieve what you want to achieve. So I think just be very clear about the why and the what and the how will manifest itself. And to my dear listeners, I hope you've enjoyed listening to season one of the Resilient Entrepreneur podcast. We'd love to hear from you, you know, some of your comments, some of your suggestions. We're always open for feedback and uh, we look forward to having you for our next season. I'm still not going to reveal what that is about. Tune in and you'll know more. Until then, take care. Goodbye. This is Druti Shah signing off.